What is the ethical role of the media in today's rapidly changing world? Are we setting the bar high enough? And what is our relationship to our audience? These questions and many more will be discussed today by prominent people from the media community and politics. This is the International Communications Forum's conference and live on TV. For the 29th year, the International Communications Forum held an exciting conference surrounding media today. The aspects around the code of ethics was discussed with prominent figures from all areas of media and politics, with many voicing concerns surrounding the media's ethical responsibility in this rapidly changing world. After Bernard Marguerite opened the conference making a huge statement with his comment that bringing news is not the same as journalism, he opened the floor for a range of topics, many opinions were heard, and a few haunting and interesting truths were told. Among other things, the topic of truth often returned to the discussion, whose truth are we reporting? Is there a certain truth that's true? And who cares, supports, or manipulates the truth? Martin Bell said, write what you know to be true, not what you believe to be true. We've just come back from Iraq. What strikes me about Iraq, that in this whole context, the violence is what we hear here. We don't hear the story of the immense enthusiasm uh, for this vibrant democracy, which is the most, one of the most lively and inspirational democracies in the world, and yet the story we get here is merely of the dark side. Do we really need the BBC to curate the news for us anymore when we can open our internet, open our mobile phone, choose our news, read whatever paper we want, watch whatever television we want, it's all there for us. I like to argue that we are living in a world where everything has changed, but nothing has changed. But to bring it to what is the, the topic of this particular session, which is government and the media, to use the phrase again, the media matters. The media matters absolutely to the govern governments. Who is winning or losing? Who is on the right side of history? And this matters absolutely to whoever is in power, be it a government with all the legal institutional means at their disposal, a very ordered country like Britain, or if you're in a country in conflict where the, the power is being challenged or the state is crumbling, those who are in charge, don't call them a government, it may be men and women with guns, Perception matters absolutely to them because it is a battle for political survival. Everywhere you go in Syria now, and, and I have to say my own experiences, whether it's a shopkeeper or someone in a government office or someone wearing a uniform and fighting on one side or the other, as soon as they see a journalist, the first thing they say to you is, you must tell the truth. And that is the same question that Sam has on his notepad this morning. What is truth? When I started, I mean, a very long time ago, you know, I'm my eighth decade now, um, and he said to me, you know, when you're going to interview somebody, you know, some <coughs> authority, a paratric or something, always, before you do anything, ask yourself, why is the lying bastard lying to me? We, in fact, have, in this country, a fantastically regulated press already. The things that uh, were disgraceful the people who are being tried now uh, from the news of the world, um, they, they knew that some of them were denying that, my God. They knew what they were doing were criminal acts. They are being tried under an existing uh, criminal thing. You don't need any more. Everything is subjective. At least be honest about that. And that's all I think one should do is be honest as far as you can be and respect your readers. And not nearly as stupid as the sort of grand panjandrums who analyze the press think they are. Public would be reading it and judging what's going on actually through the eyes of the journalist who was in Syria, who was in Saudi Arabia, who was in Bahrain. So it's not the questions, it's just actually also the eyes of that journalist who is uh, going through the cyber, looking for the news, asking his own questions and conveying it to the public. I think this is one of the most important things. This is a very um, calm society where media is sort of, and can have its, its own actually uh, glory. But what about media in the world, in Russia, in Afghanistan, in Egypt, in Saudi, in Bahrain? How do we inform or put into criteria the media in the world 
beyond the English Channel. Media is about um, responsibility, ethics, education, freedom, but at the end of the day, the media is affecting uh, the masses down the streets, and they are getting killed, and they are killing each other in the name of religion, uh, democracy, in the name of socialism, in the name of communism, in the name of whatever it is, but they are killing each other because the media is conveying to them things which are not sometimes true. Other things that were discussed were the responsibility of the media in conflicts, and what consequences can one report have. Among other things, the intriguing Martin Bell, former war reporter, gave the haunting story that stayed with many participants after the conference. The journalist, he was an American, he had a Pulitzer Prize in mind. So he fits us up with the man's commander and he goes to the front line and he meets the sniper and he sees him peering out between two grease blocks in his forward defences. And uh, the journalist asks the sniper, what do you see? And the sniper says, I see two people walking in the street. Which of them do you wish me to shoot? Mm. At this point, the journalist realizes that he has made a grave miscalculation. He should never have embarked on or even considered this assignment. So he pleads with the sniper to shoot neither, turns and leaves. And as he does so, he hears two shots of rapid fire from the position he's just left. That was a pity, said the sniper. You could have saved one of their lives. Mm. Mm. I tell this story because I believe that journalism generally and war reporting, which was my particular field, is in some sense a, a, a moral enterprise. That you have to be aware of the consequences of what you are doing. And it is increasingly, I think, difficult to separate fact from fiction. You'd think we'd know better what's going on. Actually, we don't. It's very hard to... Uh, to discern the veracity of some of the of, of some of the images um, coming at you, it, I think the old uh, maxim holds true that uh, the falsehood is halfway around the world before the truth has its boots on. So it's in the end, it's up to us. It is a moral enterprise. If you don't have a sense of right and wrong, don't don't even begin to do it. And we are responsible for the consequences of what we report. Thank you. Of course, the eminent pros and cons of cyber media and social networking were all at the table as well, as well as the foreign reporting and the ethics surrounding reports from conflicted areas. As we are today closer than ever to anywhere in the world, ironically, we are finding it harder and harder to get the truth out of foreign reports, as foreign correspondents have grown scarce. Why do you blame the media? Of course I blame the media. If the media is... The, 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 the force to shape the public opinion. The church in the West, the church, I heard priests in the Church of England, they think Christianity is a Western religion. They don't know that, that the cradle of Christianity is Syria. They look at you as if you are coming from the moon. So where is the media in breaking these walls? Everybody is a journalist. Everybody can put an opinion, to put a picture, to put um, a blog, anything um, on the internet. And then they become kind of journalists. When you speak about Syria, it's a mess. We have to agree. The only fact we have to agree on, it's a mess. And especially in the second year of, of the conflict, which was the <coughs> ultimate mess, when you switch to the CNN, you hear a story. You switch on to um, Al Jazeera, you hear the same story, but completely different, in a different way presented. You switch on to Al Arabiya, you hear a third version of the story. You, you switch to the BBC, you hear a fourth version of the same story. And the absolutely fascinating thing was all four, to defend their versions of the stories, they have what we now have a very jokey thing in Syria about it, the eyewitness, Shahid Ayan. Terminology does matter, it was mentioned briefly, uh, but uh, we are very sloppy in the West about terminology. There's some words we throw around that I really hate personally. One is regime. We talk about the Syrian regime, so we give permission to, uh, to others who have other agendas to talk about the Israeli regime or to talk about the, you know, these words are pejorative. 
if you're going to use them, you're going to use them to slag off another government that you disapprove of. But once you start using regime as a word in this kind of way, then others will start using regime to describe you, possibly. After a brainstorming session to finalize the day, the participants were left feeling content and inspired for the future. Obviously passionate about these topics, we asked some of them what they thought about the conference, what's most important to them, and what they believe we can do in the media to better ourselves and better the world around us. I think it's painfully true that the media in the world is, well, it's flawed in so much as we have our agenda which is built by our own cultures, our own, our own preconceptions. And when we look at these situations, we are very selective and we drop stories. Syria has been dropped now for Russia. Russia's a big agenda. We'll drop Russia for the next big agenda. And in the West, we really haven't got the attention span we should have. Foreign affairs is not properly covered. And it's vital that it is. We need to be a more, more inclusive in our coverage and, and be less fickle about these issues because these issues keep going on. And, and the Middle East particularly is, is in a lot of pain at the moment. So we need to care. We need to begin to care. Well, a lot of different topics came up, you know, issues of responsibility, issues of um, having a code of ethics, issues of um, how well the media serves the public interest, if it, you know, if it's all it does, and the kind of the context specificity of different um, areas around the world, different conflict zones, different state countries at different stages of democracy, etc. So I thought it was very comprehensive in that sense. In, in British schools, all children learn about good citizenship. That's part of their education, that's part of their curriculum. So they are taught how to be good citizens. So in a way they are taught about ethics. Uh, but I think, you know, it, then it's a different issue when you're coming to the press. I think, you know, where does it all be begin really? Which comes first? Do you educate the people? Do you educate the newspaper proprietors? Maybe you have to do both at the same time. So when we were talking about um, accuracy and representation and and being kind of responsible um, in journalism as well as other forms of media I think we need to pay attention to how we use words and how we use terms and what effects they can have on on people somebody said we are all journalists all people are journalists in today's world we, we really have a burden that we are not actually acquitting properly we do not inherit the her the earth we borrow it from our children and it's something that we have to really think about is what we are the legacy we are leaving. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Rudina Hatipi reporting for Levant TV. Take good care.